Welcome everyone. Uh, this is your <coughs> census training. Uh, Mr. Mark Boyd, uh, partnership rep from Census, and Janice Atwood, Atwater, from also Census Partnership. Uh, she will be our representative probably from this point forward. Mm -hmm. So Janice will be our primary contact. Um, I look forward to this training. Uh, you know, so we need it. Um, I think hopefully this will answer a lot of the questions that we all have. Uh, with regards to the census. I want to be able to answer those questions uh, to the public. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Mr. Boyd and uh, we'll get started. Well, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate the opportunity to update you and, and train you regarding complete count committees. You'll hear me say CCCs all the time because complete count committee is a mouthful. Actually, CCC is a mouthful. I'll blur through that, but that, that's what I'll refer them as. In this training um, we're happy you signed on so a couple of things uh, housekeeping I, I think everybody knows the bathrooms back to the back there correct and if everybody can put their phones on vibrate that would be great and this is interactive and you can ask questions at any time so a lot of material we're covering so it could be up to three hours it could be less we're going to do a, we're going to kind of take a break halfway in between around around uh, 10 30 or ish um, there's going to be an interactive uh, demonstration of Rome by Devin or Jessica. I don't know which one of you guys are going to do that. Jessica? Yeah. Be Jessica, thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. And um, let's see, what else? Oh, your brochures there, your folders have a lot of information in there. There's a training guide. There's a guide. There's a training manual. There's some leaflet information with demographics of Green County, Ohio, and the USA, some comparison information. There's some information that Jessica just printed off in regards to some of the low response rate areas, low response score areas, and we're going to use some of that information for the workshop so we can get some objectives and some strategies down to what you guys can start off with. This is in no means meant to um, get your entire strategies and objectives for your complete count committee. It's just to get you started, and hopefully after this training you'll have a meeting soon to get things up and going. But we want to get you partway on the, on the road, and we're going to do some subcommittee um, and if, when we do that, I'll describe the subcommittees, their composition and their focus, and we hope maybe you guys can be thinking about that as we're going through those subcommittees, and, and we'll have Janice come up and put up the names of the subcommittees, and you guys can volunteer for which ones you think you can um, most effectively be a part. Some of them will be obvious which ones you should be in, others may, may or not be, and you can be in more than one subcommittee. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? We will have cookies in just a little bit. So. That's important. And there's coffee. And I do have water that I need to... Stop behind you. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to grab one of those waters, too. You sure can. Thank you. Water one. And feel free to stop me and ask questions if you have a question um, that you want covered. Okay, so let's, let's begin. All right. So the 2020 Census Complete Count Committee Training Manual provides information to educate Complete Count Committee leaders and members about the 2020 Census and their role in the committees. The goal of this manual is to equip CCC leaders with the information they need to train their members on ways they can help promote participation in the Census. <clears throat> Content covers a combination of topics such as background and structure of the committees, recommended subcommittees, resources and tools available to help drive participation in the 2020 Census, Lessons learned from the 2020 Census and discussion on community needs, development strategies, and creating an effective work plan. This manual also includes details about purpose of the decennial census and the integrated communications campaign uh, in support of the 2020 Census. So a little bit about this training. Uh, the Census Bureau Regional Partnership staff We'll use this manual to help state, local, and tribal governments and community leaders form and manage effective complete count committees. On the following pages, you will find background information on the U.S. Census Bureau, details about the decennial census, and tips for ensuring a successful count in 2020. The goal of this, the goal of this manual is to train the trainers. So complete count committee leaders are fully equipped to manage the committees and train their own committee members to lead and operate effectively. The following documents should be included in the training package. A CCC guide, a CCC program brochure, that's the little 
um, trifold and a CCC training manual. So let's look at an overview of the CCCs. The CCCs are one of the core strategic elements of the Census Bureau's partnership program for the 2020 Census. These committees exist to plan and implement locally based outreach campaigns that raise awareness of the Census and ultimately increase self-response and participation rates. The CCCs can achieve this goal through grassroots outreach efforts and that promote the importance and benefits of responding to the Census. One of the key reasons these committees are effective in raising awareness is because of the members' knowledge and understanding of what it takes to engage and inspire others within their community. That's you. Better than people coming from Washington, better than people coming from Philadelphia, we need you guys. The Census Bureau Partnership Specialists will serve as, and that's me and Janice, will serve as technical advisors and information resources for all the Complete Count Committees. The daily management responsibilities rest solely with the community leaders serving the community leaders serving as a chair of the CCC, and that would be you, Devin. Just saying. <laughs> All right. So, background and structure of the CCCs. The state and local government CCCs consist of influential community membership and trusted voices who are appointed by the highest elected government official. Typically, the committee members are experts in the following areas government, education, media, technology, community organizations, workforce development, faith-based institutions, businesses, and others based on the community needs. And we can see we have a lot of the people from that uh, different segments of the community here today. The Census, the Census Bureau encourages community leaders in hard to count areas and populations to form complete count committees. Hard to count areas or populations, for example, have, and Kim, do you want to describe these? Yes. And I think this uh, Green County has quite a few of these. And this, this isn't, these aren't meant to be an exhausted example of hard to count populations, communities, but these are just the major ones. So hidden or overcrowded housing, you can abbreviate if you want, or if you want with the manuals. Do we have any of those populations, Green County, that you're aware of? Okay, that one won't get a check mark. Populations that speak little or no English? Huh. Do we have any of those? Off-campus apartments? Lots of those. Including someone we Including someone we Oh, okay. Uh, new immigrant populations? Yeah. Some of those? New immigrant populations. Well, here's one especially for you guys. People displaced by natural disasters such as floods, fires, and hurricanes, and tornadoes. <laughs> wow. Yep. Children under age five. That's our biggest center kind of population, believe it or not as far as 2010 was concerned. And then, gated communities. Yeah. It's hard for our numerators to get into some of those communities to count, and if they're not self-responding, it's hard to, to do those. We have, we have any of those? Yes, there are some. Yes. Two that I know of do are gated. I think there's one in Melbrook, and there might be yeah. a couple in Cherry Creek. I know there's private subdivisions as well. Some of them don't appear to be gated. Not physically that, anyhow, but right. vir virtually, yes. Right, right. So, the only one, I, if I remember correctly, the only one that's not a big concern is little or no English. Is that right? Little or no English population. Well, Speaking little or no we have, a, I wouldn't say pockets of those, but we do have people within the area that... Okay. 
it's very minuscule in comparison to other places like Montgomery County, but. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Jens. Yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. What about your homeless population? They're, they're not our largest, but we, they are another kind of population. Right, so we have a special um, operation, group quarters operation does the, uh, un the homeless population, and they do a service-based enumeration. And what they do is the last three work days of the month of March, we have a special, specially trained crew of people that interface with organizations like, is it that? That know where the homeless population is, it generally, and we go out to um, soup kitchens, we go out to regularly scheduled mobile vans, we go to parking lots, bridge, under bridges, wherever the homeless are, and we count those. And the people that do that are specially trained in handling people with maybe have substance abuse issues or, or um, um, uh, psychological issues that they may be dealing with, and we treat them with dignity and respect, and we try to count as best we can. So it's the last three days of the month of March, last three work days of the month of March. Would our military population fall under the off-campus, uh, or is that? No, no, but we could, separate. <coughs> that's separate. The, uh, off, we have special uh, group quarters that do off-campus housing. They do the on-campus and the off-campus housing. So, well, not actually the off-campus housing. It's just regular enumerators are going out to do that, but we need to specially train those because that's a difficult population. Mm -hmm. And we really need to get the word out to this since you have so many. Um, I actually did off-campus housing for the 2010 census, and it, they are very difficult college students to get to take this serious and to, to do the enumeration. So um, we're going to really need some special we, help with We that. do have complete cooperation from our, our right path to get uh, uh, their members counted. Okay. So um, so veterans are an undercut of uncounted population, so we could put that up there, too, if you want. not one of our biggest, but you guys have a big Air Force base here, so it should be up there, I see. Okay. <clears throat> so the background and structure of CCCs, we covered some of that. And um, one of the principal benefits of the CCC program is the synergistic effect of working together as trusted voices in their communities to spread word about the importance of the census and the value of participating and being counted in the census process. Every time a CCC is established, the Census Bureau is one step closer to conducting the most successful census ever. And getting an accurate count can't be achieved without local government and support. Uh, establishing a CCC can significantly help ensure your community is counted. All right, so let's next look at a decennial census overview, why we actually conducted a, a census. <clears throat> the United States began conducting a census population and housing in 1790. The U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, mandates the apportionment of representatives among the state for the House of Representatives every 10 years. Apportionment is a process of dividing the 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives among the 50 states. <coughs> By law, the U.S. the U.S. Census Bureau must deliver a report of population counts to the President of the United States within nine months of Census Day, or on or about the December 31st. The report will provide population counts by state and the number of seats in each U.S. House of Representatives apportioned to each state. Okay, so the census is confidential and required by law. All responses to the Census Bureau surveys and censuses are confidential and protected under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. Under this law, the Census Bureau is required to keep respondent information confidential. We will never share respondents' information, personal information with immigration enforcement agencies like ICE, law enforcement agencies like the FBI or police, or allowed to be used to determine eligibility for government benefits. The results from any census or survey are reported in statistical fact format only, so no personally identifiable information is released. Individual records from the decennial census are, by law, kept confidential for 72 years, and that's under Title 44 of the U.S. Code. So that means that in April 2020, 
the next most recent results of the census which will be 1950. So 1950 census results were released in April of 2020, 2022, and that's 72 years. In addition, under Title 13 of the U.S. Code, all Census Bureau employees swear a lifetime oath to protect respondent data. It is a felony for any Census Bureau employee to disclose any confidential census information during or after employment, and the penalty for wrongful disclosure is up to five years in imprisonment and or a fine of up to $250,000. Okay, so I want to talk about the technology in the 2020 census versus the technology in the 2010 census. There are some important changes. So we are building a more accurate address list and automating our field operations, all while keeping your information confidential and safe. For the first time, you'll be able to respond to the census online or by mail, or by phone. We will use data that the public has already provided to cut down on in-person follow-up visits to non-responding households. So in other words, we would send someone out in the non-response follow-up phase to count households that didn't self-respond, and we would send waves of people out there. We're still gonna do that, we're not gonna do it as much because we're gonna use some in-house data, some data from maybe Social Security and other uh, agencies, government agencies that you already have provided information to, to to help us verify who's in that household. So there are many uses of the census data. Some examples include, include the distribution of over 675 billion annually in federal funds to state and local governments, redistricting of state legislative districts, forecasting for future transportation needs for all segments of the population, determining areas eligible for housing assistance and rehabilitation loans, assisting federal, tribal, state, and local governments in planning and implementation programs and service and emergency responses. You guys would be, did you, did anybody actively involved in the tornado emergency response in the room and, and had the opportunity to use census data to, nope. Okay. That's used a lot in the emergency response to census data to know what housing, where people were, and how many people were in an area make sure that we, to, 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 for the relief and to the emergency response and rescue mission. <clears throat> also, other use for census data includes is designing facilities for people with disabilities, elderly, and children. It's also used for roads, schools, hospitals, um, transportation grants, Medicaid, Medicare, Part B, Medicare Part B, um, SNAP, Highway, it's used for nearly everything. All right, so, Let's talk about complete count committees. What is a complete count committee? A complete count committee is a volunteer committee established by tribal, state, and local governments and community leaders or organizations to increase awareness and motivate residents to respond to the 2020 census. CCC serve as a, serve as a state and local census ambassador groups that play an integral part in ensuring a complete and accurate count in their community in the 2020 census. Success of the census depends upon community involvement at every level. The Census Bureau cannot conduct the 2020 census alone. So let's talk about the different types of CCCs. We're first going to talk about a government CC, and that's the type of CC that you have. The first type of CCC are government CCCs. They include tribal complete count committees, state complete count committees, local government complete count committees, which is yours. These committees of government officials and community members appointed by the highest elected officials of a, of a state or local government for the purpose of developing and implementing a census awareness campaign that motivates their communities to complete the census thoroughly and in a timely manner. Wow, that's a long sentence. Government complete count committees may be small, as little as 5 to 20 members, medium, as large as 50, 20 to 50 members, and large as, as much as 50 to 100 members or more. The state of Ohio is forming its complete count committee. It'll be 50 to 100 members on that committee. Yours obviously does not need to be that big. There's also a community-based CCC. And this comprised of a team of community leaders and or organizations brought together to design an outreach plan for hard to count areas or populations in their community. Their focus is to encourage individuals in their community to respond to the 2020 census by internet or mail or by phone. Community CCCs are usually small 
to medium in size with about five to 30 members. Those are usually put in places where there isn't a uh, government CCC. So we'll encourage, where there's not a government CCC, and I have a few of those, I'll encourage local organizations, community organizations to form their own CCC. <coughs> so lessons learned from the 2020 census. Since the 1980 census, complete count communities have played a major role in raising awareness of the census among all groups and populations. The experience, influence, knowledge, and experience of committee members are invaluable resources to complete and accurate count. The following are lessons learned for future committees. These committees were a prime example of partners taking ownership of the census process and leading outreach efforts. Partnership specialists said the Complete Count Committee's initiative was among the most effective strategies for comprehensively reaching the hard to count populations. Although the Complete Count Committee initiative was very successful, it needed to start sooner. Previously, it began two years before Census Day. By starting earlier, it allows better in integration into our organization planning and budgets. And when we're starting now, is fine. So let's talk about some of the recommended structure for a successful CCC. The Census Bureau has learned from previous censuses that and has formulated recommend recommendations for success in 2020. These recommendations are based on information gathered from committees, focus group sessions, and summary reports submitted by partnership specialists like myself. Some of the recommend recommendations include, customize and design the committee to reflect a true snapshot of the community. Use technology effectively. Communicate with committee members through electronic mediums, including social media and email. Include diverse perspective to achieve objectives. Access, assess which groups, locally or national, are able to provide support and assistance. Choose a committee chair who is committed, knowledgeable, and active in the community. Select a subcommittee chairpersons who are purpose-driven and results-oriented. Review CCC activities in your area from the 2010 census. Repeat that what worked well and eliminate what did not work well. Modify activities and incorporate new innovative activities in your plan as needed. Incorporate census awareness in all existing community festivals and activities scheduled. And you guys have a lot of festivals and activities throughout the county, so we want to make sure we get that in your plan too to make sure. We just did the Pride event in Columbus, Ohio. There were, um, they said there were like 500,000 people that came to the city. And that booth and, and, the, and the traffic was great and we got a lot of awareness of the census of that. So any kind of um, festival or event that you have, we want to make sure, especially as it gets closer to April 2020, make sure we have a presence. We'll help you with materials and information, and then we we'll, may need help with volunteers to help staff. We can help staff some of the booth, booths based on how busy we are at that particular time. We, we will have, uh, we'll be partnering with Park, Parks and Trails, uh, with a booth. Uh, so we'll be at the Parks and Trails uh, trailer. We'll be right there. It's one of the most highly, highly trafficked uh, places at the fair, so I think we'll get lots of traffic. We're going to buy some some goodies to hand out, maybe a, a bag with the census information on it, some swag, it some swag, <laughs> yes, they can hand it out, and they can put things that they buy at the fair in it. Uh, another one is that recruit experienced members to motivate and support new members of your committee, and keep detailed records of your CCC strategies and activities so that the program can better and can be better assessed and best practices can be replicated for 2030. All right, CCC structure. The Census Bureau recommended structure for complete count committees maximizes the effectiveness of community outreach strategies in their communities. However, the committees are encouraged to adopt their own structure based on unique community needs and develop a strategy to meet them. A committee may choose to create subcommittees dedicated to these needs. Regardless of the structure, government committees should include members with experience in the following areas. So we want some experience in government, we have that, workforce development, faith-based community. Um, I don't know if we have that. We do have representation uh, from faith-based community. Do you recall the, the person's name? Uh, we have someone that um, that's related to a church, but not um, like all of them in general. I can represent the Ministerial Association in Cedarville. Okay. That's perfect. Very good. Very Ministerial good. Alliances. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, education, we have that here. Media, technology, community organizations, and business. P 
People who are selected to serve on the CCC and subcommittees are expected to communicate the importance of the 2020 census to their peer groups and guide them in implementing strategies to increase participation in respective communities. The committee will use multiple strategies and tactics to deliver key messages during the different phases of the census. Okay, so local government CCCs. Government CCCs are formed by highest elected official in a government regardless of the size. This includes local governments in cities, counties, towns, and villages. Tribal and government CCCs are charged with developing and implementing a census awareness campaign that motivates every person living in every household to be counted in the 2020 census in a timely manner. Community CCCs are usually formed in support of specific hard to count communities. Grassroots community organizations efforts are essential to reach populations who have not responded well in previous censuses or have had a history of being undercounted in the census. In some instances, community CCCs are formed to fill a gap in areas where there is no government sponsored CCC. Community CCCs usually include representatives from the following areas of the community. Businesses, educators, media representatives, faith-based organizational leaders, community-based organizational leaders. The entire group selects a chairperson and subcommittee persons, chairpersons. Committee members determine the committee size. All right, some of the key points to remember about the CCC structure include, committees should be all-inclusive, addressing the various racial, ethnic, cultural, and geographical considerations of the community. The Census Bureau staff serve as liaisons and information resources for the committees. The Census Bureau provides technical assistance in development of the committees, but does not manage the committees. I can hear my, my, my manager in my head. That's their committee, Mark. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not here to manage it. I'm just here to assist. Or Janice is not here. You remember that, Janice. Thank you so much, committee. Um, the committee operations are governed by the highest elected official or community leader. Responsibility then falls to the chairperson, the committee members, and finally to the community. So recommended subcommittee structure. So it is essential that the committee addresses and reflects key facets of the community. The decision to form subcommittees is based on community need and the challenges and opportunities in reaching areas of, or populations that they may not may not respond or may potentially be undercounted. The Census Bureau recommends including, including subcommittees focused on recruitment, government, business, education, housing, media communications and technology, faith-based, community organizations, seniors, senior citizens, and philanthropic. It's important to note that in the past, Committees have also created subcommittees devoted to data and maps, youth, homeless, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender questioning, LGBTQ, veterans, special housing, immigrants, and homeowner associations. These subcommittees can help reach the most challenging areas to count. Different subcommittee structures and, and sizes are appropriate for different types of committees. The subcommittee structure is determined by the size and the needs of the community it serves. If the CCC chooses to form subcommittees, here are examples of the various subcommittee structures and the functions. So we're going to go through a list of them, and then we're going to put them on the board and see which people are interested in those sub subcommittees. But we're going to talk about the focus and uh, the composition of each of the examples I just mentioned. So first we're going to talk about uh, recruitment subcommittee. The focus is the right slide here. The recruitment subcommittee distributes recruiting materials received from partnership specialists and assists partnership specialists in securing donations for space to train employees. And this is this is critical. So all of this is mute if we don't have enough people or the right kind of people to do the count. So recruitment is a key part. All the stuff we do doesn't matter if there aren't, we don't have the right people out there or enough people out there counting or doing address canvassing or other operations involved with the census. Um, the recruitment subcommittee publicizes Census Bureau job openings using social media and other available resources, including local festivals and job fairs. It enhances the ability of the Census Bureau to plug into existing recruiting resources. 
So the composition includes employment security staff and staff from job training agencies, uh, Goodwill, United Way, city, state, and federal employment agencies. Next one is, and we'll go through all of them, then we'll put some um, examples of people, what you're interested in participating in. And the next one is a government subcommittee. Its focus represents local government and all programs between the Census Bureau and local government, such as new construction programs and others. Elected officials are aware and are included in committee activities. The composition includes elected officials, city, county planners, uh, demographers, cartographers, and municipal employees. The next subcommittee is the education subcommittee. Its focus creates, creates, facilitates, and coordinates census awareness activities among various educational levels from pre-kindergarten pre to postgraduate, including daycare centers, Head Start programs, and parochial, private, charter, and home schools. Ensures a wide distribution of awareness of the statistics and school program and materials. We'll talk a little bit about that. Works with area colleges and universities to implement Census Bureau higher education program and awareness among students housed on and off campus. Raises awareness through adult education and English language learner programs. Composition of a Education subcommittee includes educational leaders, superintendents, principals, school district administrators, charter school administrators, teachers, students, parent-teacher organizations, teacher organizations, and university housing coordinators. Next subcommittee is faith-based subcommittee. Its focus facilitates and coordinates census awareness activities <coughs> between faith-based institutions and organizations, ministerial alliances, ecumenical councils, and seminary administrators. Composition includes faith-based leaders from all den denominations, ministerial alliances, ecumenical councils, and seminary administrators. Next subcommittee is Media, Communications, and Technology Subcommittee. Its focus assists the committee in communicating census messages to all, facilitates communication of the committee messages through multiple channels, such as ethnic media, local newsletters, electronic bulletins, local websites, and utilizes different social media venues. Assist the community organizations in utilizing census toolkit materials and enables organizations to innovate. Assist the community organizations in utilizing, I'm sorry, uh, countering false and misinformation about the census. Now its composition includes local media representatives, communication directors, bloggers, publishers, and edu edu editors of newspapers, neighborhood newspapers, graphic designers, social media users, and ethnic media representatives. Next subcommittee is community organizations. Its focus is to coordinate the building of coalitions with community organizations that serve the special needs of various racial, ethnic, cultural, civic, fraternal, and advocacy groups, immigrants, and people with disabilities. Its composition includes executive directors from community organizations, community development block, block grant directors, leaders of fraternities and sororities, membership and non-membership organizations, and advocacy groups. Most major cities have offices that cater to the needs of immigrant, refugee, and minority populations. An example would be the Mayor's Office of Latino and African Affairs in Washington, D.C., and the Department of neighborhood super neighborhood councils in the city of Houston. Next subcommittee could be business subcommittee. Its focus coordinates and generally and generates census awareness activities that involve businesses of all types and sizes. It creates a unifying element that reaches every household within the community. It encourages their employees to respond to the census. Composition includes chambers of commerce, business alliances, neighborhood business associations, franchise owners and operators, financial institution officers like bank managers, owners of small community <coughs> and ethnic businesses, and utility company managers. So those are the different subcommittees. If we can maybe go through each of them and see which ones that you guys may want to have and which ones you guys are willing to volunteer for. So let's start with recruitment. I think as far as recruitment, um we can funnel that through everyone. 
we can have common messages that we can put up on our websites and on our uh, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's up to you. Uh, I don't really see any, really any need for a subcommittee on, our, on for recruitment, but I, I think we can disseminate the message pretty well. What say you? Yeah, I mean, unless we have somebody in the group who specializes in that area. Yeah. yeah. I, I think so. Maybe just somebody to make sure that the that the PDF yeah. files and the recruiting information yeah. digitally is getting to everybody. Our BCC um, will will take care of that. Jessica yeah. sent that information out. And we've already got it up on our website. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we've already did. Uh, yeah. Make an attempt, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And government. Uh, we have all forms of government represented. We have townships. We have uh, our municipalities. Um, uh, I wonder if our municipalities would find common ground where they could form a subcommittee or find the need for it, or, um, Brian, uh, any other reps from municipalities? I just want to write their names on the... Uh, okay, sure, yeah, go right ahead. Um, Brian uh, Forstner with the City of Lina. Uh, I think that... Uh, Thank you, who's the one with the uh, RPCC will, will take care of that. Um, Brian, if you want to talk to some of your co uh, colleagues at the uh, in municipalities, maybe that might be a good subcommittee. That way, you guys aren't really duplicating uh, efforts at you know, so You can just contact us if you need anything here uh, for your subcommittee. Education subcommittee. Uh, Brian, Brian Fortner. I'm not saying he's the chair. I'm just saying he, he can, he'll help. He'll talk to his colleagues. <laughs> okay. As far as the townships go, uh, Silver Creek Township is hosting the Green County Township Association meeting on July the 9th. Okay. Um, <coughs> it's at Mr. Dwyer, one of our trustees' uh, home, his barn. Um, if someone would want to come from the Census Bureau, it would have to be short and sweet, like a five minute presentation to, mm -hmm. and you would reach all of the townships in Green County. Trustees all at the same time, yeah. Yes, well, I think unless you would like to. Along that, along that same line, I think every township has received oh, the yeah. same information, that's why we're Absolutely. here. So it, it, will be, it will be more or less trying to set up maybe if, if we're going to have a committee yeah, so chairman, whoever that might be, and they can, mm -hmm. they can, they can address that at the township. At the township. I, I gave a short presentation at the Township Association meeting last week. You were the there? meeting wasn't well okay. attended because there were lots of um, other things going on that night along with tornado, continuing tornado relief and, mm -hmm. and some glitches in communication, but I'm, I'll continue to do presentations with the township okay. township association um, okay. as needed. Okay. I'm happy to do that. Uh, maybe the discussion could be to form that subcommittee right. and okay. ask for volunteers. Right, right. At that meeting, at the meeting. Would you want to take care of that, Ed? Yes. Uh, ask township yeah. association, yes. Sure. Okay, okay. so it's July now. Government and then township. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Township. Mm -hmm. Township association. I'll let Carol and Noah will be on the agenda. And they'll try to find I'll let Carol and Noah will be on the agenda. Okay. The, 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 no name associated. Yeah, yeah, they could be more organized. And then Brian's more city municipality. Mm -hmm. so we have Brian, uh, yeah. a higher plan as our speaker, so that's why I said it would have to be something short that maybe we could get more townships involved in. Definitely or something. Okay. Okay, so got government and uh, education subcommittee. I think we're well represented. Uh, how many uh, of our universities are here in, and school districts? So we have four. Can we uh, school at Cedar? Cedar Cliff, Charlene. Cedar Cliff, Charlene for Cedar Cliff. Yeah. School district. And uh, Beaver Creek City Schools. Beaver. Brian. Brian. Ryan. Ryan for Beaver Creek City Schools. 
Dana or with Will Ryan, I think. Ryan R. 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 Charlene, what um, area was that? Cedar Cliff. Cedar Cliff? Yes. Oh, it's Cedarville. Okay. Cedarville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Area. And we have Dana with Wilberforce. Is it D-A-N-A? -A? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the next? Bob. 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 Yeah, Wright State. Wright State. Okay. Involved at Wright State. Uh, would any of you be willing to uh, chair a subcommittee? Would you? Do you think that uh, local school districts should be on their own, and then uh, colleges, universities could form a, a subcommittee separately, or do you think they could be all together? I mean, uh, the difference is so significant. I think. I mean, there are two separate messages. I think. You know. So possibly, would you be interested in a subcommittee for uh, our school districts and then one for our colleges and universities? <coughs> that might be a good okay. idea. Okay. And do you two want to kind of coordinate with one another to kind of connect with your other school districts? And then, okay. And then Wright State and Wilberforce, would you at least uh, begin the discussion with your uh, uh, colleagues at other universities? Here. I have a question. <laughs> when does this actually start? I mean, when are you going to, are you going to hand us a packet of information with all the addresses in our areas and we're going to have a certain month that we're going to be working on this next year or when does it start? That's my next part of the presentation. Oh, okay. All so right. We're going to do I a timeline and we're going to do I'm the to different segments. Along. I'm sorry, sir. That's <laughs> fine. No, that's a good question. Very good question. So um, you asked, well, we're going to give you a list of uh, addresses. We, we do all the counting. We just, the committee is to get the word out to different hard to count areas and different okay. parts. So the Census Bureau, and I get this, I get this all the time. And I must not be communicating. You don't have to count people. No. Okay. This is the we don't do that. <laughs> we don't. We, since this bill, we do all the operations, all the counting. Matter of fact, it's illegal for you to go door to door to ask people that information. We don't okay. want that. We just want you to help us get the word out that the census is easy, important, and safe, and why it's in their best interest to do it and to reach those undercounted out populations for all the reasons I talked about in my other presentation, as far as representation and funding that comes back from the federal government, and then the data. The data is so important for planning. Planning. So if you have Garbage in, it's garbage out. If you don't have a complete and accurate count of undercounted populations, you don't have good as good planning data. So that's why. So yes. we'll we'll count. Okay. Matter of fact, I count. You Charlene. can take Charlene and Ryan off the education part since you put us down in your school districts. Yeah. You got universities and you got school districts. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the universities. Okay, so we got uh, we got the education subcommittee, uh, faith-based subcommittee. You said we could be on more than one, right? I yes. Do the faith-based one too. Right. So. We appreciate that. I think that's going to be a hard. And if anybody in the room has contacts with other ministerial alliances and out throughout the county. You have a contact name. If you could get it to, it's Charlene. Yes. It, you can get that information to Charlene, so we can. We're not reinventing the world. We're getting as massive uh, uh, faith-based uh, organizations and leaders. Faith-based are very effective in getting people to do the census. They're trusted voices in the community, and when you know they encourage people to do things, it has a much better effect than, again, somebody from Washington. There's a yeah. Yeah. To that. yeah. I don't even know all right, the next one. What was your name again? With the faith basis, Charlene. Charlene Campbell. And I think you all should should have an updated list of, of members that you should be able to, to yeah. look at for for reference as well. Yeah. Okay. 
if is you there need a couple it? of uh, ministerial lines of sense in you that two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you are two weeks. Right. 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 Two weeks. Right. Hey, I, I just know I'm doing it because mine's probably. If anybody needs a contact list, you can always email me and I'll send a copy of it to you. Okay. By the end of this one, they'll each other's names, right? <laughs> Charlene, do you have a, a contact number I can get from you for Jamestown area ministerial association? I could give, give to them. Um, 927-768-0366. Okay, so the next subcommittee is Media Communications Technology Subcommittee. Media Communications. I don't believe that we have any represent. I don't know that we solicited uh, folks from that, that group. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, we certainly can. I know a couple. Uh, Richard yeah. might be one that may want to participate. Uh, Dayton Daly. Yeah, we'll see. We'll try to get them together and see if they are willing yeah. to form. Because they obviously are best at getting the word out. Sure, absolutely. In, in a bigger way than than everybody else can. So we'll, we'll put that on the list for sure. Daniel or Joe Mullins from the radio station would be good too. Okay. Talk to Scott Hallis at the Xenia Daily Gazette too. He's, he's very active. Scott. Scott. H A L A S Z. Okay. Is at the Xenia Daily Gazette. Okay. Contact all the TV network for their mm -hmm. they want to be looking for the way all the time. Well, Gabby, yeah, they'll, they'll be invited at our proclamation kickoff yeah. to all of them. Yeah. And when is that? Uh, we'll be announcing it. I mean, I'll just tell you now. It's July 23rd, tentatively. Yeah. Um, at the courthouse? Yeah. But we'll be sending out a formal letter to, to the uh, uh, highest elected yeah, official in each Devin has the each jurisdiction and the school districts, etc. All right, so the next one would be community organization subcommittee. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what, uh, so this would include we, like uh, ethnic organizations, culture organizations, if you have an Hispanic population or a large African American population, fraternal and sorority, fraternal organizations, sororities, advocacy, ab advocacy groups, an immigrant um, communication uh, uh, committee, I'm sorry, um, organization. If you have any of those, or you think of any of those, they would be good to get the word out to their specific community um, and be a trusted voice to uh, their community. So right. I don't know if you. We, we've got uh, some representation. Um, I can't remember the name of the uh, nonprofit. Uh, you recall? You remember the name? No. Uh, we we we'll print out our list okay. so we can have that. I. Ha Do you have it? Thank you. All right. Let's see. We have Job and Family Services. Not necessarily a non, you know, not necessarily, uh, but they do serve uh, uh, our low to moderate income folks. Uh, we have the Interfaith Hospitality Network of Greene County, and I think that's about it. So that Interfaith would be under the. It might go under big data. Yeah. I think they specifically, um, the reason why they're on there is because they assist with the uh, homeless people. Yeah, the homeless, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be that would be a subcommittee you want to think about if you uh, beefing up that committee. And um, so the next one would be a business subcommittee. It would be Chamber of Commerce people, business alliances, neighborhood business associations, franchise owners. I think uh, Paul Newman, uh, since he's not here, I think we can just volunteer Paul. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. I, I spoke with him. Someone's name for him. Paul Newman, yeah. 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 I, I, I've spoke, I've already spoke to him. And he, he's agreed to kind of coordinate the business community. There are, 
five or six active chambers of commerce yeah. within Greene County, yeah. and and they often meet together yeah. for various functions. That's what we need to. So once we, we get connect have, with the chambers, yeah. I think we got Paul can uh, be that conduit. I, I would suppose. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you need yeah. more time to start up with chambers. In fact, the chamber in Beaver Creek is, has taken a year. surprisingly and welcome active role in tornado relief, um, disseminating information, right. especially to their membership. But it's working both ways in the sense that some of their members need help, many of their members can provide it. And so That's a they're a central nexus for. Uh, communicating availability of, of assistance in an hour into the business community following the it's, tornado. Each municipality has their own. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if we can get someone to coordinate those. those okay. and, and I don't know what your largest employer is in the in the county. It's the university. The university. The university. In the base, that's right. Any other non-university uh, military Businesses that are large. So twist. The, hmm? Twist. Twist. Twist is the. Um, I actually used to work for Twist. Like um, it's a manufacturing facility in Jamestown and Kenya. So businesses are good to have on. Just from my experience in the past, they're good to have in your committee because, I don't like to say that. So none of them are here, so we can say <laughs> they are sometimes a source of funding for your committee because they have uh, some disposable funding, and then also what the large funding for. Huh? So let's say if you want to print something, if you want to, if you have a community, you want to get some posters out there or some badges or some buttons, you want to have some swag at the at okay, the events. So the the Census Bureau doesn't provide that. So we have the artwork for that that you can print out, and they say there may be some, but I just don't want to tell my committees to count on it. It it, it just depends on how the budget. Is. There's some budgeted, I know they told us that, but they actually told us don't depend on it. Don't tell your committees to depend on them. Now I may come down the road and hey, I got this the swag for you, but I don't want you to depend on it. And businesses sometimes have a little disp extra disposable money that they can spend for printing, things like that. Um, also, a large businesses, if they just get the communication message to their employees, it's a good thing. That the census is easy, safe, and important. If they get that communication message to their employees, it's good. So if all the businesses in the chamber get the message to their employees, that's a big impact, right? That the, and if all their employees are participating, then that's a good impact. It's not targeted in a hard to count population, but it is, a, it is a good impact. Okay, are we good on the businesses for now? Any more I think we'll, we'll get that coordinated. Okay, so that's so much for the subcommittees. Thank you, Janice. Does this committee need a funding subcommittee? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I, I think the commissioners are, are willing to help, uh, and I'm sure a lot of the municipalities are willing to put Is in a little bit for Is somebody coordinating that, though, so that the same uh, organization doesn't get asked more than once and that we spread the wealth? I mean, I'll definitely be coordinating with the municipalities and, and the commissioners, so you know, we'll take care of that part of it. Okay. So if you need any, put it this way, you. if you need anything, just call me and we'll figure it out where, where that funding source can be uh, uh, obtained. All right, so thank you for the question. Teeing up my next segment of the uh, presentation. So this timeline is going to describe the phases of the 2020 census campaign that the complete count committees may find beneficial in developing outreach strategies for their work plan. So the first phase is the education phase, and that's 2018 to 2019. That's actually up to December of 2019, December of this year. That's the education phase, what we're doing right now. The education phase is a period from uh, 2018 through December 2019. During this period, key, communi key community and municipal leaders received training informational materials and one-on-one -on -one meetings with Census Bureau partnership staff about the importance of the census and the need for local support to ensure a successful count. This is also the period when the CCC leadership develops the mission and message with all members. They identify how to bring awareness to the community. 
The public must understand that the census is their civic responsibility and that affects all people of all ages, races, cultures, and ethnicities, regardless of citizenship status. The next phase is the awareness phase, which is January through February 2020. The awareness phase of the 2020 census officially starts January 1st, 2020. Government and community leadership throughout the nation participate in activities highlighting the message that the 2020 census is easy, important, and safe. The next phase is the motivational phase. That begins in March and goes through May of 2020, next year. The motivation phase starts in March 2020. During this phase, the committee implements activities of the work plan through the government, faith, community, business, media, recruitment partners. The goal is that every person living in the United States will encounter a census messages or census messages during the time of work, play, leisure, school, and worship. So in April 2020, the focus is to motivate everyone in the community to take ownership of the census, make a, con a conscious decision to participate, know where to go for assistance in answering the census, and be poised and ready to answer questions on April 1st, 2020. April 1st, 2020 is Census Day. One of the primary goals of the CCC is to increase the response rate to the 2020 census and reduce the cost of the non-response follow-up operations. And the reminder phase is between May through July of 2020. However, it actually starts in April of 2020. We'll begin following up with households that did not participate in the census or did not self-respond. This operation is called our non-response follow-up. Now in May of 2020, we will continue with the non-response follow-up operation. The objective is to get non-responding households to cooperate on the first visit. In August of 2020, as the census operation winds down, special thanks, thank you sessions for the work of the census will be held throughout the nation. Okay, so there are just a few examples of activities I'm sorry, these are just a few examples of activities or action steps for the committees. They are not all inclusive, just examples to get the committee started and thinking about what activities will work best in the communities served. Question. Yes, sir. Okay, you say April 1st is going to be the census day, right? Mm-hmm. And... That's just the reference day. Well, yeah, but if everybody, if everybody thinks this is April 1st, how are they going to, how are they going to handle the the computer jam log. Now, I, th I think they're actually able to respond prior to mm -hmm. uh, April 1st. So, well, I'm just saying, because John Q. Public, when they go out there, and if they can't get in on, you know, they get kicked out. Right. What's the chance that they, I think you're, you're probably going to lose some people that so, will not that will not respond back. I'm just, sure. I'm just asking the question. Well, it's a very good question. If, so, they, if they're going to. So maybe that maybe they ought not say April first. Maybe they ought to put a time frame in there instead of everybody says April one. I'm it's, with you uh, today it, because it, I'm one of them. If I don't get right. through, I'm well, probably not going to go back. I think some of the messaging should be improved on the when you can actually start filling out a survey. Right. So we're going to send out invitations for everybody to go online to do the census on March twelfth. April 1st, and it's a little bit confusing, is just the reference day under the principle of usual residence criteria. We count people for the decennial census on where they usually live and sleep on April 1st. Where so they usually live and yeah. sleep. There's lots of different criteria. Don't so you that think? criteria needs to be spelled out better. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a kickoff day to start. It's not just one decade. Actually, it's before that. So we'll send okay. out invitations in March 12th. You can go online immediately on March. When you get your invitation, you can go online to do the census. Some people, a small percentage of the, of the everybody, like 95% of the households, will get an invitation to go online. In some areas, they will get uh, an invitation to go online and a written census form because they're in uh, not connected areas, more rural areas where they probably can't go online. So they'll get an invitation to go online and a written paper form that they can fill out and send in. These will all be sent out March 12th. So you can start right then, and then you can go. We want you to have be finished um, by May. We want you to, when you, if you're not finished by May, 
or you haven't gone on to do, do the census by May in that month, then we're going to start sending people out to follow up with you. So it's not one day. So, so I guess I'm not being clear. So April 1st is our reference. That's why when it's the reference. So for instance, if somebody doesn't have, say they're in transit and they don't have, um, and they're in a temporary sh shelter on April 1st, they don't have a home yet. Their home is being built, like maybe some of the communities in Greene County. Then we'll count where they're, um, well, that's not a good example because we'll count the map there. If you don't have a home on April, we count you where you were living and staying, staying on April 1st. So that's, so that's just a reference day. That's a point in time reference point so we can know when we're counting for. So if they're at a shelter, you're going to count them at the shelter on so if they if yes we will count them in a the shelter if they don't have a home say if they're, if they're temp in a temporary shelter they do have a home say a, a battered woman's shelter and they do have a home that they normally live and sleep in they will be counted at that home where they normally live and sleep but they're temporarily at a shelter we won't count them at that shelter but if they didn't have a home say they were kicked out of the home or they don't have a place to go back to then they'll be counted at that shelter where they're living and staying on april 1st it's a it's a reference day. It's not the day you start, but I understand how you can get confused with that. It's not the day we start counting. It's just the reference day where we want to where we count people on that day. So if their home was destroyed by the tornado and they can't live there right now, but they're in temporary housing in another county, you're still going to count where their home is that's being repaired. Yes. Okay. Good. That's good. <laughs> We didn't know that initially. We, me and Janice, Janice, thank you, looked it up. There, are, there's a page this thick of, of special criteria, and I did not know that when, um, and we, we looked it up. We have to look it up. You go on the website. It's under uh, uh, residence criteria, 2020census.gov, and there's like lots. There's all kind of special examples um, of where we count people because there's all kind of special circumstances. Um, the vast majority are easy. You know, but there's some special circumstances, so you guys have to be in the county with one of them. I'll send that out to everyone uh, after the meeting, the residence criteria, because we have it. Yeah. Uh, we were actually looking at it for mm -hmm. answers to some of the questions that we had from a meeting in uh, Bath Township. Right, absolutely. The Rotary Club gave me some awesome questions that mm -hmm. at that time I just didn't know the answer, so we, we definitely want to get those answers. <laughs> So this question is just resident criteria as far as people living in hospitals and it's um, prisons. Um, all of it kind of in group quarters, it's, it's, it's confusing and it's nuanced because it's based on, like for instance, hospitals. Is this an acute care hospital or is this a long-term care? If it's acute care, you're probably going to be counted at your normal place where you live. You're not going to be there forever. You know, it's going to be where you normally live and sleep, not at the hospital. If it's a long-term <coughs> care facility, and this is not true for all long-term care, but in some long-term care facilities where you're there, um, you're counted at the facility because it's more long-term. That's where you, and maybe you don't have a usual home or residence to go back to. If you're an adult or a child, it's different criteria. If it's a penal uh, correctional institution as far as just a group quarter institution, there's different criteria uh, where you're counted at. So it's, it's kind of nuanced and you can get in the weeds in it and I'm just suggesting you don't because 95% of the time it's going to be easy to count. So. And if we're getting questions, like you just said, he had questions that that um, he needed to get answers to. Maybe we can start an FAQ that if one of us is going to get those questions, the other is going to. So if we start a page with FAQs with those questions and answers and share amongst the group, then hopefully we can answer those questions instead of having to keep asking them, all of us asking the same question. Mm -hmm. Or you can link to that. You can link to it. And put that out there. Yeah, exactly. I think a good FAQ we can formulate that. That's what I'm saying, within our yeah. group. I, I and, and we'll disseminate the uh, uh, residency criteria. <clears throat> okay, to clarify, if yes, I get my invitation on March the 12th, on what date am I considered non-responding if I haven't done it yet? So that's unclear in my mind. We will, if you, if I, when I was reading earlier, you can, they will start non-response follow-up at the, probably at the end of April. Um, I don't know how they, uh, and to be quite honest, I don't know when and where, but I know this, I noticed that they said they will start non-response call-up, so the sooner you turn it in, the better. Um, but you always have those procrastinators. <laughs> okay. 
And those cost money because that non-response follow-up operation is the most expensive. It's the largest. It's what costs the most dollars, taxpayer dollars. Do you have a question, sir? No. No? Okay. All right. Um, we'll go where I left off here. Slide away. Okay, uh, action steps for now through December 2019. Conduct CCC training for your members, that's what we're doing. Conduct a census solutions workshop with CCC members to generate ideas to increase participation in your community. That's at the back of your training manual. You can, you can look at that uh, CCC workshops. Develop a work plan for, mo for promoting the census and motivating participation in your community. Uh, we're going to do some of that today. Hold weekly, monthly meetings, or as often as you want, to report tasks and other activities, including subcommittee reports, as appropriate. Proceed with census awareness building activities generated by the committee or subcommittees. Evaluate the effectiveness of the CCC activities and adjust accordingly. Saturate the community with at least one census awareness building activity each month and communicate regularly through social media and print. So the awareness phase is between January 2020 and February 2020. And that, during that phase, you will hold meetings as often as you, seem that, that you, see, you deem fit and subcommittee meetings if possible. You will finalize plans for activities surrounding Census Day activities. Again, this is January through February of 2020 next year. Uh, you will review task lists and subcommittee plans. And you will proceed with 2020 activities. Finalize plans for activities to encourage respondents to complete and return the census questions. Develop and finalize plans to, for motivating households who did not respond to cooperate with census takers during non-response follow-up activities. So that's the awareness phase, January through February. And then the motivation phase is actually March through April of 2020, next year. And then during that phase, some of the suggested action steps will include holding regular CCC and subcommittee meetings, finalize plans for all activities scheduled for March and April, review and implement activities leading up to Census Day, which is April 1st, 2020, and again, that's just a reference day, send a news release highlighting the 2020 Census activity schedule, get the word out via social media, encourage respondents to immediately complete the questionnaire online, by mail, or by phone, you can implement Census Day activities. Sometimes people have parades or, or some, uh, I was told by my coordinator that sometimes the mayor of a municipality has a brown lunch, uh, a brown bag lunch where people can come and have lunch with the mayor and they can talk about the census. We can have somebody available there for that particular event. Uh, Re review outreach activities to ensure the committee is using the right activities in the right place. Make changes as needed. Prepare to implement activities for respondents who do not complete their questionnaire. The Census Bureau plans to provide response rate numbers starting in April. These response rates may be used to determine where more outreach activity is needed in your community. So this, will, this is not available yet, but this will be as soon as the census starts, will be an online website that you can go to down to the census track level and see what areas in your county are not responding or slow responding and you can focus efforts the committee can use that to focus efforts so that's kind of live information that we can see what effect uh, the census is having mm -hmm. uh, uh, so. and it's real you're going to be much more live i don't know about live but it's going to be mm -hmm. much more real time than yeah. before because people your, our enumerators are going to be using online, uh, we're going to be using devices, electronic devices, where they're entering the information before it was paper. So the paper had to go back to the area census office, be tabulated, and go to Washington. It was just a whole long thing. It's going to be much more real time what areas are not responding and which areas are responding. You can focus on so You'll have, you'll have that direct contact for that? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be able to so we'll do that online. In fact, um, yeah. are you guys, are you guys going to pull that up and then, like, if it happens to be? We'll need to get a game plan to, right. to get those response rates up, yeah. like, quickly. Help the census takers. <laughs> yeah. And the reminder phase is May through July 2020. 
actually starts in April 2020, will begin follow-up with households that did not participate in the census. This operation is called a non-response follow-up, as I mentioned. In May of 2020, we'll continue the non-response follow-up operation. The objective, objective is to get non-responding households to cooperate on the first visit, however. In August of 2020, as the census operation winds down, special thanks, thank you sessions for the work of the census will be held throughout the nation. Okay, so I'd like to go through the timeline. I'm sorry. I went backwards here. All right, so we're going to talk about developing your CCC work plan. All right, the components of a good complete count committee work plan. This chapter provides a model for developing a CCC work plan, outlining goals, strategies, and time frames for achieving a complete and accurate census count in the community. The plan should address local changes such as population speaking languages other than English, highly transient population areas, and low educational attainment. Components of an effective work plan include define the goals and objectives of the CCC and provide a description of the community, including hard to count populations or areas considered most critical to reach and motivate and areas with residents displaced by floods, hurricanes, or tornadoes who currently live in temporary housing. Identify the general strategies for implementing the work plan. Committee structure. Identify the name. We've done some of this already. Got you a good head start. Identify the name of the CCC, such as um, Green County Complete Count Committee. Describe the structure of the committee, including the names of any subcommittees and their focus or outreach objectives. CCCs may develop strategies for reaching their target area population. The strategies presented may include promotional materials to be developed by the committee, strategic assets such as members, volunteers, and space, along with additional resources from the census media market outlets that are important to reaching the target area or population. Next component would be in reporting. Include a report of subcommittee activities to the CCC after the activity has taken place to gain insight on best practices. <coughs> Modify future activities as needed based on feedback from the activity of the reports. And then the next um, component is a thank you. This includes strategies for thanking committee members, the community, and others who provide support throughout the campaign. And then there's a final report. Prepare a final evaluation of your CCC activities and successes to help the Census Bureau guide future committees and to plan appropriately for the 2030 Census. Okay, we're almost ready for a break here. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I think so. We can get one more slide through here and then we'll go break. Okay. So effective CCC activities. Here are some examples that CCC leaders identified as effective during previous campaigns. So public service announcement, PSAs, CCCs rank PSAs among the top five most effective activities. Advertising campaign, previous committees noted that advertising was effective at the national level, but that it was important to conduct a local campaign targeting hard to count populations. Radio and social media are effective mediums in many communities at the local level. Banners, posters, billboards, and advertising on benches. CCC said that these types of promotionals work the best in tribal, rural, and non-English speaking communities. Print materials. Print materials were deemed especially effective for committees working on the ethnic communities or rural areas. Faith-based activities. Activities coordinated by faith-based organizations were tremendously successful in building awareness of the census in previous censuses. Translation of materials. Committees in large urban areas noted the great value of providing materials in multiple languages and then local media coverage. All previous committees felt <clears throat> local media coverage was essential to getting the word out about the census, but noted the need to enlist support from others. Some committees could get media exposure by exist, ex enlisting politicians and sports figures as spokesmen and promoting school contests and projects centered on the census. Okay, so let's take a break now for maybe 10 minutes and then we're going to I have a few more slides and then we're going to do a uh, demonstration of our ROAM, which is our Response Outreach Area Mapper, and then we're going to do the workshop. Okay. Of course, you have some people that are suspicious about anything. Mm -hmm. 
That's why you guys are so important. <laughs> you guys are so important. And we have actual links. And I, mean, I don't know if I've sent this to you yet. We have a link that actually says, census takers in your neighborhood, what to expect. And it's a link. And you can put that on your way. There's all the stuff, you know, how to spot a census taker. He'll have a badge. He'll have a bag. Uh, he'll have a device. Um, there's a number, eight, a number you can call to verify. They can get that person's name. They can verify that that's a census taker. And to questions not to answer. If somebody's asking you what your social security number is, you should be answering that. So there's a link to tell people, to inform people, all of that stuff. There's also a link that says how to, um, something about a scams or frauds. And you can post that link and get that information out. That's why kind of the media thing is important. All right, so let's get started so we can get out of here. So on the road to the 2020 census. I have the right slide here, okay. So identifying hard to count areas and populations. The CCC should utilize the, law, the local knowledge of its members and data on the makeup of the community. Of the community. One resource that will provide data about hard to count populations is the Census Bureau Response Outreach Area Map, a map called Rome as an acronym. And it's at, it's at census.gov forward slash Rome. Based on information in Rome, the committee may want to develop activities that target community communities with high low response scores or LRSs. The low response score is an indicator of the percentage of households that are most likely not to participate initially in the census. Previous history indicates that tracts with higher percentages of rental households likely will need extra encouragement. For example, the CCC may want to include rental management or association representatives or representatives from social welfare or social service departments as members on the committee. These representatives work with these populations on a regular basis and may have insight on the best way to reach them and motivate their participation. Using Rome and identifying areas with low response scores in the community can help the committee focus outreach strategies in the work plan in areas where they are needed most. This targets the community's outreach and promotion more precisely and helps improve the accuracy of the 2020 census. So a little bit of an overview. The building, the building on the lessons learned from the 2010 census, the 2020 census will conduct a fully integrated communications campaign featuring advertising events, public relations, and partnership activities. The public relations objective for the integrated campaign is to surround every household in the country with credible, memorable messages through trusted conversations that motivate people to respond to the census. Additional resources. The Census Bureau plans to provide materials that will be customizable, allowing CCCs the flexibility to include additional information and graphics. Many others will be turnkey and will be dropped into newsletters or posted on a partner's website. All materials will include a consistent messaging to maximize the effectiveness of communications across the regions. The Census Bureau is hiring for 2020. Information on available postings and how to apply can be found at Census Jobs website at 2020census.gov forward slash jobs. So here's the, uh, the general operational timeline. The 2020 census integrated, uh, and this is the timeline for the integrated communications campaign, um, includes the integration of paid advertising, advertising, public relations, special events, marketing, statistics in schools, and promotional efforts will rely heavily on partner participation and outreach at both the national and local levels. Census Bureau plans to launch the campaign with an awareness phase beginning in January of 2020. So that's when it's going to ramp up. You're going to see all kind of messages all over the place on TV, radio, print, at the national level and regional level. In March 2020, the focus will shift from awareness to motivation, encouraging people to respond immediately. The reminder phase will begin May of 2020 and will not only encourage immediate responses, but will also encourage those that have not responded to cooperate with census enumerators when they are visited. Finally, there will be a thank you phase where the Census Bureau thanks everyone for their assistance and participation. I just thought of a question. Will the online census be available when they're doing the non-response part, or will there be a deadline when that closes? It'll be available until the deadline. It's like the end of uh, August. I think it will still be available. All 
All right, so the key dates for the 2020 Census operational timeline include address, address canvassing. That's in August. That's when we're going to be sending people out to make sure we have all the correct addresses. Um, area census offices open in the spring, and they're gonna, more going to be opening in the fall. Census day is April 1st. And on December 31st, we deliver, de deliver the results of the apportionment counts to the President of the United States. <clears throat> And then redistricting data is released, data for state legislative districts is released by April 1st, 2021. Okay, so in just a minute, we're gonna take a look at Rome. We're gonna have uh, Jessica or, or, or uh, Devin do that. But before we do it, um, that's, I, want to, I made a few slides to make it a little bit easier to understand and na navigate Rome. So let me go to, before you go, let me just go through these slides. All right, so Rome goes down to the census lack. It's an intera a census track. It's an interactive map um, that, that Jessica's going to show us. So a census track, does anybody know what a census track is? Probably some of the planners in here really know what they, those are. The relatively permanent statistical subdivisions of a county. The average size is about 4,000, but they can be from zero to 8,000. We want to keep it around 4,000. So if it gets too small, they, they may sh combine two census tracts. If they get too large, they may split census tract so it gets close to the 4,000. Primary purpose is, is to provide stable geographic units for the presentation of statistical data. They are maintained over a long period of time for statistical comparisons from census to census. Um, they usually cover a contiguous area. Geographical size varies depending on population. Po uh, occasionally they're split due to population growth or merge as a result of substantial population decline. Boundaries generally follow visible and identifiable features like roads or rivers. They always follow state and county boundaries, boundaries, but they do not always follow municipal boundaries. So, um, uh, so a track may go from one city into another city, um, but they will never cross counties or state boundaries. Uh, they're updated by local participants prior to each decennial census as part of the Census Bureau's Participant Statistical Areas Program, PSAP. Did you do that? Did you guys do that? Um, PSAP. Which is the Moose Cisco Ares program? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to get it <laughs> All right, next slide. So I mentioned you heard me talk about low response scores. I think NBRPC did the PSA. Oh, is that where we went and reviewed the maps? Yeah, they had a workshop. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, did that. Yeah, NBRPC uh, managed that. Gotcha. That's right. Usually the, the yeah. regional planning commissions do that. That's yeah. right. Okay. All right. Um, so a low response score. It's a predicted level of census non-response at the track level. The values range from 0 to 100. For example, if the LRS, LRS score is 25, we're estimating that 25% of the households in that track will not self-respond to the census. 25% will not self-respond. So the higher the low response score, the worse. It's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, for a comparison, 79.3% uh, of all households nationwide mailed back the 2020, 2010 census. So that's their response score would be, uh, the response score for that would be uh, like 21.7 would be the low response score for the nation. You follow me. Uh, low response score limitations and cautions. It uses 2010 mail-in self-response and current ACS data. 2020 census will offer internet, phone, and mail-in options to self-respond. In other words, what they're trying to say is it may be a little bit different, these low response scores, because we didn't have the self-response option for the internet when we did these predictions. So it may be a little bit different. We're hoping more people will respond and the low response scores will be lower. Okay. Uh, LRSs are not calculated for all census tracts. Um, so if there's not enough people or if the data will identify somebody statistically, their personal information, it won't be, it will, they'll just be blank. So if there's so few people in there and there's somebody like, for instance, there's somebody that's like 95 years old and the census tract only has like 25 people in it, they're not going to identify stats in that tract because it could identify that person because there's so few of that people. There. So we will never release information that could any way possibly identify someone's personally identifiable information. So you'll see some things on Rome that won't be reported, and that's usually the reason why. Um, you access the data through the Census Planning Database and the Response Outreach Area Map or web application. 
and this is just a screen of the planning database. We don't need to go into that. And that's a screenshot of the planning database. That's getting way in the weeds. Okay, so Response Outreach Area Mapper is an interactive web mapping application that allows users to access the Census Bureau's planning database to determine areas down to the census tract that are harder to count. The, PD, the PDB, the pl planning database, includes the low response score, the 2010 census data, and the select American Community Survey estimates. These data help create a picture of hard to count surveys, <coughs> hard, I'm sorry, hard to, count, hard to count areas, those identified by high, low response scores. Using Roam, users can visualize areas by predicted mail-in non, mail non-response rates, determining contr contributing socioeconomic or democratic, demographic factors, and planned outreach, marketing, and promotional efforts. These data also help the Census Bureau hire staff who reflect the diversity and speak the language of the community. These and other efforts can improve response rates. Okay, so are you ready for So many of you can access Rome at any time. Uh, in fact, MBRPC actually has uh, these data mapped and uh, presentable on, from, on their own mapping system as well. So there's two sources with the same data. One is through MBRPC, one is through the actual Rome mapping site. Uh, pretty easy to operate. Uh, also, if you just Google Census Rome, it'll come up and you can click on it. Uh, you have to zoom in to Green County, so it starts out with the whole country. <coughs> to zoom in. And once you're in this application, you can actually click on the specific census tracts and view uh, all the very um, the, all the various information, such as race and poverty rate, as well as um, winter housing units and um, um, vacant housing, uh, family size, all the various information. Uh, that you will need to help determine why these people aren't responding or potentially why they're not responding. It's a very helpful tool that you see specifically in Greene County. Our areas of interest are going to be um, this area around the base here and Wright State University. Um, we have Central State and Wilbur Morse University in the Township. And then we have also here Cedarville. Um, we have Cedarville University and that's potentially why we have a higher so the darker <clears throat> the darker the area yeah, the, the darker higher area. the low response yeah. um, and then also as well uh, for Yellow Springs but, um, and in your packet we we printed out some of the demographics that help you with the workshop area so we can have an example of how you can answer the questions using a, a specific it may not necessarily be, necessarily be the area you're going to be working as a part of the committee but it's just to give you an example of how to strategize and, and, and get your work plan in order to do to address different problem areas in your county. Just can you go back for a real quick second I want to show in case somebody go, goes into this go back to the map up in the left upper corner you can enter in you don't have to zoom down you can enter in your your county or your city or your township um, into the, the, the white box at the top of the corner and then push the magnifying glass right there. Yeah. Just make sure it's put in Green County, Ohio. You can type in, you can do that by city, municipality, municipality township, even probably. I think so. Yeah. <coughs> so you just have to specify county and um, state as well. Yeah. Look at that, that's a tiny little spot. <laughs> I, I think and it's all light green. Yeah. I think if you just put New Jasper uh, Township, a list will come up too. If you, you know, you don't type as much. Well, I'll have to do my hand. There you go. Jasper was fun. So it, it, it points to a, a center spot in that area, but then you go outside and click and it'll, it, it'll bring you drop down a little bit. 
the various Miami townships in, in Ohio. Yeah. So for that, it's And this is not, this is, you've got, any, 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 everybody can go to this site and do this. This yeah. is nothing fancy, you don't need any special software, you can just go right to the website. Census.gov forward slash Rome. It's also on our website, there's a link to it. Um, I sent you out a link to it before in previous emails, and as a, you can just Google it as well, the Census Rome. Um, so here are some of the problem areas that we are, uh, percentages of things that we thought were kind of important. Uh, Renter occupied housing units, as you can see here, this area that has a really high um, low response score. The percentage of renter occupied units is 82.64%. Uh, population aged 18 to 24 is 70.12%. Um, and this immediate household income here is about $27,000. So you can really kind of narrow down specifically what the problem is and how to approach them. In that box of demographics that she showed before, when it initially comes up, it has a box there that can be expanded. It has all the different uh, demographics that may, be, could, that may cause problems with county. Uh, Non-English speaking, percentage of the household that's uh, does the percentage of the community doesn't speak English. There's just a wealth of information that you can, if you see that an area is darker, you can go into that information and, and pretty much figure out why. So sometimes when I first did this, and this isn't part of the training, but I put it in there anyway, sometimes I didn't know what the, per, I didn't know the reference percentages. So I didn't know if 30% or let's say 20% of 20% uh, poverty or low income, was that a high number or a low number? I didn't have a reference. I didn't know what that was. So I put a sheet, I printed out a sheet that looks at, United States numbers, <clears throat> Ohio's numbers, percentages, and Greene County's percentages. So you'll kind of have a reference point. Like I didn't know what was low. And I, could, I mean, some of my knew it was like you had 90% property. I knew that was bad. <laughs> but, but whether 15% was bad or not, you know, well, you know so, so I put those in there just for, I thought that would be helpful. Yeah, you can for expand you it uh, by this little window. You can even print it if you want to. Um, uh, they're actually uh, in your packets. We have three different areas for you. We have this tract, which is um, the highest uh, <coughs> response score area in the county, and it's the Bath Township one. We also included Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which is this larger tract. And then I also included Tina Township here around Central State and Global University. So there are three different ones where we went ahead and uh, printed out all this information. So part of your workshop, we'll pick, Devin, which one of those areas would you, so this, just an example of how to get, how to do your committee will be operating. Which one of those, maybe? I'll do Bath and uh, Zinia. And then you'll see the workshop questions, and you can answer those workshop questions based on those particular. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jess. Final stretch here. Okay, so let's start the workshop now, actually. Let me go back a couple slides. So I would, I would like to divide into two groups, and you'll see that worksheet page is the, is the single page with the blue strip at the top. The single, it has a blue strip at the top. Everybody got this page? Mm -hmm. There's two sides. I'd like to divide into two groups. One side will do the work plan activity sheet, 
And then the other side, we'll do the questions, which are community identification questions. So we can split up however you'd like to do it, and then we can, we have an extra flip chart there that we could, uh, you could write your answers on that flip chart as a group, and then somebody will come, come present them to the group. And this is just to get an idea of how your committee will work and strategize to, to make sure that you're getting. Uh, we want to just divide by. Maybe we can put the schools in one area. Okay, yeah. Because they're going to have some common. So, and then, so how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two. See how I counted as a census bureau employee? How I did that? <laughs> Very good. So there's 12, right? Did I count yeah. that right? Yeah, I mean, the schools are already on this side. So. Okay. Well, no. Oh, well, I see your point. I thought you were speak, speaking specifically like university. So let's, what, what, the school's going to be together. We can do it that way, and then everybody else. Is there like four or five school people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that something with you? Mm -hmm. good. You guys move. And then here's a chart. Here's a square. We'll, put a, we'll, we'll do non schools down this way. Almost 11% foreign born, which is a little more than twice of the counties, 80% renters. So, um, how, do, how do these present a challenge? Well, you know, we figured a lot, this is a mix that the, what's generating these numbers is a mix of college students as well as base personnel. So, that high rental percentage. Um, you have a large transient population. <coughs> Uh, college students, uh, we thought they, you know, they think they don't count where they are. Uh, they think that maybe their parents are counting them, so that for that reason they don't, you know, they don't view themselves as living there permanently. Uh, when in fact that they should be counting themselves where they are, where they're living in their dorm or off-campus housing, wherever it is. So that can be a, a, a barrier to overcome. Uh, these are also the the younger populations, their first time taking the census, they may be unfamiliar. Uh, if they're foreign born, um, that's another you know lack of familiarity. Um, there's also, since it's a transient population, whether it's base personnel or college students, uh, there's kind of a, a lack of allegiance to the area, meaning, you know, maybe that's not the best word, it's more just that they, they don't think they're gonna be around here very much longer, so they don't view themselves as, as part of the community. Um, and that might, you know, prevent them from participating. Suspicion could be another issue, uh, particularly with minorities or with foreign-born citizens. Uh, just wondering what, and why is the government looking for information about me? Uh, there might, might be some trust issues. So, uh, question three is: What hard to count areas or populations are there in your community? We kind of cover that. Base personnel and college students is what we seem to think is driving these numbers. Um, how, and the question four is how can the complete count committee assist the Census Bureau in getting a complete and accurate count in these low response areas? So we, uh, our primary strategy was to work through the leadership at um, uh, Wright State and at the, uh, the base as well uh, to Try to get some information about uh, where these people live, help help enlist them in helping to get the word out, uh, possibly uh, working with some incentives. We talked about the college students, if the um, resident life department or whatever it is called at Wright State could come up with some incentives. Um, set up a table at the student union, whatever makes sense, offer rewards like coupons for pizza or um, uh, beer, but, you know, it's not legal for everybody. No, oh, hold on, that, that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> so we have some college people yeah. here. Which, yeah. How does does that even sound remotely possible to offer some type of incentive? Not beer. Not beer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Maybe some some college some of your um, logo swag. Mm, I mean, college kids always like free things, so mm. whatever we have to offer, they're usually. Yeah. So free stuff and. You know, if you if you participate in the census, so okay. the ones who who live there um, in in Bath Township, since you're talking about it, uh, are as you said, uh, a lot of students, and and we have a move-in day, which 
takes uh -huh. up a lot of the dorms there and that are part of that township. And so that itself is significant because they'll be getting a lot of things that day and for the week after. Right. Information, I mean. And, and at any time, there's a way to access them. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we also talked about for for on-campus housing or on-base housing, it's kind of easy to work through the institution to uh, to get to that. But for the off-campus folks, it might involve working through landlords. There was a thought that, and actually this might be a question for university folks as well, that it might be possible to get the locations in which some of these students are living through the university so that we know which landlords to reach out to. But I'm not sure whether that is protected information that, you know, you got. We're, we weren't sure whether universities would be willing to provide that information just due to privacy concerns. So, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> Thank you. So, right. the post office have that information? Well, Not yeah, but I mean, if we're, if we're trying to reach, probably. yeah, I mean, you can find, you can look people up, but it's, I mean, it's, it's a matter of you know, finding whether those are students that are living in that particular spot and base personnel. Those are the target groups you try to contact. Wouldn't the university be able to give us a general area of where a lot of their students are getting off-campus housing and we could go onto GIS and look up right. who the property owners are of these large housing areas or you yeah, can't kind of hit all, rent, all landlords anyway yeah. so you need that information from everyone whether they're students or base personnel or anyway so it wouldn't hurt to hit all the landlords right right okay so that's it for excellent job guys excellent, excellent work thank you so much we're going to wrap up here in five minutes. <laughs> okay, actually, we don't need a slide. Let's just do this. What to expect from your Census Bureau staff liaison? And that would be you, Janice. <laughs> Okay, program implementation. Partnership specialists are the primary contact between the Census Bureau and the CCC. They serve as technical advisors and information resources to CCCs. However, they will not manage the committee in any way. Partnership specialists help the committees identify census awareness building activities that are most effective in their community. They will, depending upon funding, also provide promotional materials to tribal and local governments and community organizations throughout the CCC formation and implementation process. So here are some steps partnership specialists will follow to assist local governments. They'll meet with all local governments in the area to encourage the formation of CCCs to promote the importance of the 2020 census and increase participation. They will provide orientation slash training for CCC leaders or chairpersons, including information needed to form the committees, the characteristics of effective chairpersons, the various subcommittee structures, and possible actions. They will provide technical support to CCC chairpersons, assist CCCs in developing strategy and work plan, attend when possible CCC meetings, provide guidance, recommend possible outreach and promotional activities, and distribute promotional materials and items as available. And again, we, we just, um, we're not sure whether we're going to have that or not. They haven't let us know. If we have it, um, Janice will get it to you, we promise, and we'll try to, and, we, and I know in my area, if something becomes available, I try to hoard it because I know it's going to run out and I will get it to my area. So I'm sure Janice is going to be looking out for you guys to get it too. Uh, attend when possible. CCC meetings provide guidance, recommended possible outreach and promotional activities. Okay, I said that. Encourage development of innovative activities geared to specific groups within the community and maintain an open line of communication with CCCs. This will lead to more collaborative relationships and more effective CCCs. All right. In summary, the CCC manual training manual provides local leaders. Oh. 
I think we're okay. Yeah, we got the manual. Yeah. The CCC training manual provides local leaders and partners the information needed to form strong and effective committees. Committees, by drawing on the local knowledge of the committee and on census data, the CCC will develop focused and efficient strategies to support the 2020 census. <coughs> CCCs like yours speak the language of the community and know how best to reach residents. CCCs help ensure an accurate 2020 census. <coughs> CCCs increase participation in their communities. This manual is intended to provide CCC leaders and members with tools to train their team. We have provided some basic information about the Census Bureau and covered some essential elements of a successful CCC. The most successful CCCs will use the information in this guide to create promotions, messaging, and local grassroots outreach tailored to their specific communities. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for taking your time to be part of this training. Um, I guess it's videotaped. So if other members who are joining can can, yep. can take a look at it, Devin, yeah. do you? The, well, thank everybody for attending. Um, like I said, we'll be getting a lot of information out to you uh, shortly. Uh, some of it you already have, but we may resend it just so you have it in a fresh email. I know you've received a lot of information from us so far. Uh, we're going to get more out. We want to get you some of those, uh, those that information that answers those specific residency questions that you have that you will be asked, we'll make sure to get you that. And while we got have Mark here, if you have those type of questions, uh, ask him now before before uh, Janice and, and uh, Mark, Mark leaves us. Um, so I wanna thank you uh, for participating. I'm gonna get a summary of this meeting to you. Uh, some of the strategies that we've developed here today, I'm gonna get that to everyone and uh, we'll, move, we'll go on from there. I'll be having some questions that I'm going to be asking from each and every committee member. And I, I, basically, I want in event information mm -hmm. that everyone can, can give me so that I can create a chart that we can all work from. And so we all know exactly when and where these events will be so we can have those attended. Uh, so with that, thank you, Mark. Uh, ask some questions uh, while he's here, and, uh, but thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody also like when you're after you go over the stuff when your next meeting um, okay will be to and um, identify. Do you do you want to set a next meeting date today, or do you want me to send out a doodle poll? A doodle poll is where you get the vote on uh, meeting times and dates. <coughs> Leave that up to you. That'd be good. That'd be good. So there are a lot of great ideas today of, of things you're going to do and things you need to do and things that you might hope to do. It's good to have that, you know, start to follow through on that and have who's doing what yeah. for your next meeting and maybe have it bring that to the next meeting. So. Absolutely. I think you should send a poll out in order to get the people who couldn't be here today Absolutely. so that they don't get further shut out, sure. further isolated. Absolutely. And this video, by the way, uh, thank you, Village of Yellow Springs. They are going to put this on YouTube for us. Uh, so we'll be sending you the links. And Mark's scared to death now. <laughs> no, Mark did a wonderful job. Wonderful job. Appreciate it. And uh, so that, that'll be on. Uh, uh, we'll send you that link. Where did the email come from that you're sending us with the? Who's that? It comes from usually okay. Jessica. What's the email address? Do you, can you give me something so I can do a search? Because I mean, I got it for yeah. this meeting, but I think that's all I've gotten. Yeah, Jay Hanson. It's my, uh, I can give you my business card if you want. That'd be great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so where do we get flyers to pass out at these coming events? And uh, maybe get pins? We've got May some. Yeah. The census 2020. We have the uh, models, I guess. Okay. So we can, yeah. so we can do that. And, and you said parks and trails is going to be. There, there are supporters for uh, the fair. Yeah. So we'll be setting in in front of their trailer. Okay. But are they going to try to attend some of the small community events? I, I don't know. I'll just talk to them. Too, too the festivals and things in the local community? Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> okay, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. 
So where, wherever he get, wherever his trailer goes, we can tag along. I know we're more than welcome. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does Green County have an overall library system, or is it based? Yes. On? Yes. Okay. Good one. Yes. Okay. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> they use they we use them. They, they provide space for training new enumerators. Uh, they're, they're the best partners ever. I can see his face, but I can't think of his name. Carl Sloan is the director. Yes. All right. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you guys.